Hello, I'm Al Ewing and welcome to Forbidden Planet TV. Welcome to Forbidden Planet TV, I'm Andrew Sumner. I have a returning guest, one of our favourite creators in fact, the one and only Al Ewing. Good Hello. to see you again mate. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, no, very well thanks. Uh, last time you were on, we were talking about your glorious Ant-Man mm. anniversary book, which we're loving yep. at Forbidden Planet. Um, and, and now on to another piece of your Marvel work that we also loved, which is uh, 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 coming up in its collected edition, in, mm. in, in, which is Ant which is X Men Red. So what can, you, Red. what can you tell us about X Men Red, mate? Uh, X Men Red is it's continuing the the saga of um, I guess House of X, Powers of X, Dawn of X, Reign of X, Destiny of X. Um, we're into the Destiny of X era, and it's continuing the whole Krakoa saga. Uh, and it's showing what happens when, after the X-Men terraform Mars, uh, turning it into a livable world, and then they're, um, I guess they're kind of, for want of a better term, they're country cousins. The, um, the Araki, um, Araco being an anagram of Krakoa, uh, if you're wondering how to spell it. <laughs> that's that's how I remember. Um, the the people of Arako, uh, Krakoa's twin island that was lost in another dimension, has been fighting um, ten thousand years of endless war against demons, and has now returned to our universe to settle on Mars, uh, the newly the newly kind of created world of Mars, uh, which is now planet Arako. Um, this causes a huge amount of kerfuffle, and X Men Red is where we navigate it. Uh, with mostly Storm, it's it's pretty much a Storm is the hub of the book. I won't say it's a, it's a Storm book because there's a lot of other people in there, and she's not always set to stage, but she is she is sort of the hub of the cast. Uh, we also have Magneto. Uh, we have Roberto da Costa, um, aka Sunspot. Uh, who is a, a fan favorite character that I've had a lot of fun with before. We also have a bunch of new mutants uh, from Araka, uh, like the mysterious Fisher King, who doesn't seem to have any powers. Uh, we've got um, the, the Araka Rule Council, uh, the Great Ring, which includes uh, mutants like Iska the Unbeaten, who can, her super is that she can never lose. Uh, which is, it turns out, more interesting than you'd imagine. There's uh, there's Tarn the Uncaring, who was actually on the enemy side of the war, so he's like a Mr. Sinister figure of Arako. He's kind of a, a genetic manipulator. Um, you've got uh, Lotus, Lo Lotus Logos, who's like uh, a kind of a poet who speaks uh, metal, so he can kind of, he talks and like metal comes out of his mouth weird amazing uh, they're all they're all kind of weird and freaky um there's a, there's a whole bunch of all of your new favorite mutants many of whom do not look human at all um there's one who's like a giant insect like a sort of beetle made out of earthworms and insects himself so he sort of um there's there's a whole a whole bunch, and what they've all got to navigate is uh, what happens now, uh, because as well as all, as well as all of this, as well as all the internal struggle, you also have Abigail Brand of uh, the Space Agency Sword, the, the Mutant Space Agency, who recently revealed herself as having her own larger goals. Um, she's teamed up with Orcus, uh, the the X Men's enemies. Um, because she's got her own larger goals that are bigger than, than the X-Men or bigger than Orcus, bigger than anybody. And she's manipulating, she's manipulating everything to kind of uh, gain those larger goals. And we'll, we'll find out what she are, but we'll, we'll find out what they are. What she are? That was a, a Freudian <laughs> Um But like, because the she are are involved in this. Um, yeah, and we'll we'll find out what those goals are and uh, and how close she is to them. There's a lot going on. It's a very 
it's a every issue is a kind of slam bang it's it's bursting at the gunwales with stuff and every issue so far uh up to up to five which i think fills out this collection um has been very well reviewed and received so uh i'm obviously extremely happy about that yeah quite quite rightly so mate i mean one of my observations about you your work on x-men is is this um it's because x-men being this you know sprawling multi-dimensional soap opera that it is that seems to suit you in a couple of key ways not only your your affinity for cosmicity and marvel cosmicity but also your your deep knowledge of marvel law your 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 you know really focused interest in all of that but but also your ability which i was thinking about this the other day one of the things i love about your x-men work is work the 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 mutant powers that you're coming up with are, I think you're doubling down on a process that was, for me, was probably started by Peter Milligan with, with the ecstatics books where he was the first person I thought, oh man, you're coming up with mutant powers. I hadn't even considered, you know, it used to be mutant powers were superpowers of different mm. kinds. And, you know, if you sat down and wrote out a list with your mates at school, you could probably do a list of 50 and go, right, these are 50 potential X-Men. But I think he began a process whereby he was just coming up with stuff I had envisioned. And mm. you've massively doubled down on that in, in your tenure. So well, I, I'd love to know where you're getting these concepts from, these, it, these, these mutant I wish... concepts. I wish I could take all the credit, but it's um, it is a team effort. The DX office, we kind of we we hang out online together a lot. Um, it's a very cohesive room, and what I'm what I'm doing is kind of following in the footsteps of um, Jonathan Hickman to start with, who kind of created yeah. the status quo, yeah. um, and sort of came up with a lot of the. I mean, Iska Iska, who has one of the most esoteric powers is is one of his uh originally um but you also have you you've got cast members like uh, aura serrata who um the name came i think the name came out of a sort of group group discussion but that was that was one of size in that um you know he had a vision of the character and like um, which was like, you know, the giant, giant floating eye. Um, and then everything else kind of, everything there came from him. And, you know, so like when she gets an X-Men Red, it's like, um, you know, I, I obviously can't take the credit for that one. Uh, Logos Logos, the name came from Jonathan Hickman. We knew nothing else about them. Um, so I came up with a power for there because I, that was part of working out the, the great ring, the, um, the council of Araco. Uh, I wanted to work out like what each of the seats did, what their job was. And, um, one of those seats was like poetry and art and culture. Um, so I thought, well, we've got, we've got this guy who, uh, this person who sounds kind of, you know, Lotus, Lotus, Logos, Logos, the word, uh, probably some kind of, yeah, the power sort of suggested something in the name. Um, but the personality was like, oh, I need somebody to go in this seat and be like the poet of, the, the great poet of Araka. And that was, that was fun because what I do, what I do with that character is that every, everything they say is on the same sort of haiku type yeah <laughs> um, syllable structure yeah in that it's everything they say with i think one exception like this that was like it's six four five um and it's like which gives them this very kind of odd poetic turn of speech and all of their bubbles are like this sort of their speech bubbles are kind of this um sideways eight shape to like accommodate the uh the cadence they always speak in um so it's it's fun. It's a lot of that, but it's 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 a group it's a group thing. Um, like I'm going to be doing a lot in the next run of X Men Red. I'm kind of picking up on a little bit on uh, Weaponless Zen, which was uh, another of 
slash various uh, creations. Um, there is, if you read Legion of X, that's that's also great. That's uh, that's where you find her. Um, yeah, but there's there's all these connections. There's all these sort of as people read more and more of Araco, uh, they'll start noticing how connected it all is and how sort of you know how how much we do all kind of talk to each other. Um, Sorry, I've I've wandered completely off my. No, it's point, it's good, mate. Like, I, no, I, I can't like, take credit for it on my. Yeah, no, it's good though. That's a, that's a great answer. And um, um, before we before we go, out, what can you tell me about the uh, what do you think of the art team on this book? Oh, I Stefano Stefano Caselli is like a wonderful and and very forgiving artist. <laughs> um, no, he's like. Um, He's a wonderful artist. He's he's got this. He's a great action artist. He's great. He's a great detail artist. He's like um, he's got a kind of mastery of expressions, which I make I make use of occasionally. I sort of noticed this quite early on, and but if I kind of give him an emotion, he'll like convey it very, very exactly. And if I give him a monologue, he'll sort of um, give me some great, great faces, great expressions, great help. The emotion really kind of comes off the page. And there's a couple of points in this trade where, you know, especially when Magneto's talking, where like uh, you can really see what he's feeling. And like that's that's all stuff on him. Um, he's, it's, it's always great laying dialogue over his heart. Because he's got that wonderful command of character and personality, which I love. Uh, so that's 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 fantastic. Oh, that's brilliant, mate. Um, I, I think I think what you guys have put together it's um it's a bit of a it's kind of a bit of a golden age for X Men comics at the moment. I think X Men Red is a big part of that. We we would hope so because we really we knew you know with with Jonathan stepping away we knew we had to bring our own game. And I, knock on wood, you know, cross fingers, I would say that we have done that. And yeah, people, people reading, people reading the Xbox now are really getting the absolute best that we can offer. Um, so yeah, and, and now, now you can get it in a collected form. There we go. Those, uh, are, those are words. That's a perfect segue, mate, to everybody watching this conversation can order pre-order x-men red the collected x-men red from the links attached to our conversation now mate it's it's uh we're, we're, we you know we're big fans of what you're doing throughout the marvel universe it's always great to chat with you brother oh thank you no it's always great to come on and i'll see you soon take care yeah you too bye if you're enjoying watching forbidden planet tv and you're enjoying watching us talk to the world's most interesting and accomplished filmmakers authors artists musicians creators Subscribe right here. See you soon.